Good morning, baseball. Welcome back to another episode of your boy NMR Sports here. Coming back at you with another MLB video. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to not talk about the Angels-White Sox game. If you guys didn't see that last night, it was absolutely incredible. Highly recommend going and checking out some highlights. We're definitely going to talk all about it in just a second here. But first, we're going to talk about all the other games that happened yesterday and go over some of the highlights. I'm not going to talk about every single game, but we're just going to go over some of the general highlights. Who did well, who underperformed, overperformed, things like that. So if you guys do enjoy the content, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Leave a like on the video and uh, comment your favorite baseball team, something like that. Let's get some baseball conversations going. If you do want to talk more baseball, be sure to check out the Discord link in my description here. We've been talking baseball in that Discord pretty much all day long, every time that something crazy is going on. Just throw, you can uh, throw some hot takes, you can throw some cold takes in there, things like that. I also have a Twitch where you can talk live with me about baseball. I'll be live tomorrow night, so uh, yeah, be sure to check that out as well. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, those of you who are subscribed, be sure to send me a screenshot of you guys being subscribed on Instagram or Twitter to be entered into a giveaway to be able to win one of two MLB jerseys. If we hit 500 subscribers by April 16th, which is coming up right here, uh, I will be giving away four jerseys as opposed to two. So yeah, be sure to hit me up with that screenshot. Now let's get in talking about some baseball. The first thing I want to talk about, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit his first of many home runs this year. Everyone thinks he's going to be an MVP candidate, and he started that MVP campaign off last or yesterday afternoon with his first home run of the season. The Blue Jays would go on to beat the Yankees, so the Yankees fall to uh, one and two, and I have never seen a fan base panic more after three games than the Yankees are all over Twitter. All over Twitter, all I see is like how this team has no energy, this team is blah, 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 blah. I honestly, as high as I am on the Angels right now after them uh, almost sweeping the White Sox, that's how low the Yankees are after losing two games to the Blue Jays. So if you're a Yankees fan, don't panic. You still have an amazing team and you have some guys who are injured who should be coming back fairly soon. So Yankees, you're going to be fine. And uh, Blue Jays look very, very good right now. I love their offense. Their pitching is actually coming through for them at the moment. So uh, yeah, looking very good over there in Toronto. Another AL East team that is underperforming right now, the Boston Red Sox. I'm wearing this hat. It says 33 on it. I literally can't. There we go. Uh, I'm wearing this hat. It says 33 on it. That's how many runners the Baltimore Orioles left on base yesterday. Now, 33 runners left on base. That's, uh, that's a lot. You probably think, damn, they missed a lot of opportunities. They still put up 11 runs. They still put up 11 runs, and they left 33 runners on base. That is absolutely insane. The Red Sox pitching is an absolute joke, and uh, even their offense has not been able to combat it. They're basically going to be playing a lot of these 10-run games, and they have not been putting up the offense to combat that. The Orioles were insane. Cedric Mullins was 5 for 5. Trey Mancini had a couple of hits. Anthony Santander was doing well. Basically, everybody in that lineup was just absolutely teeing off. I believe Garrett Richards started that game. Uh, but yeah, absolutely disgusting. I'm sorry, Red Sox fan. I don't really have any any positive lights to give on that game at the moment. Now, Fernando Tatis Jr. was also off to a slow start to the season, but he hits his first home run last night uh, at the very tail end of the game against the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Arizona Diamondbacks narrowly avoid getting swept by the Padres. Padres only put up that one home run by Tatis Jr. The starter of that game, man, Taylor Widener. Taylor Widener goes six innings, five strikeouts, no earned runs. So I've never even heard of this guy, but he apparently pitched really well. Like I said, they only give that one home run in the ninth inning. At the end of the day, the Diamondbacks avoid being swept by the Padres. Fernando Tatis Jr. off to a pretty slow start for somebody of his caliber, but you can still see that he's there. He just kind of got to get in a groove. Now the Cleveland Indians played the Detroit Tigers and Akil Badu came Came up for his first major league plate appearance and uh this is what he did absolute moonshot to uh left field opposite field looks very very good his dad and his mom were in the stands and i just look at his reaction man it's so cool i love baseball i love seeing stuff like this man it gives you goosebumps i got goosebumps while watching this akil badu a uh rule five draft pick actually so he had to make the roster or else uh the way the rule five draft works you can basically take somebody in the minor leagues from another team it, it's it's really confusing but basically <clears throat> if you take somebody like that from another team you have to put them on the roster or else you lose them it's super confusing but akil badu looks like he could be a stud nomar mazara who is competing with akil badu for a starting job uh, also hit a home run in that game but the cleveland indians put up nine runs they finally put up some offense home runs from jordan luplo luplo i don't know how to pronounce his name fran mo reyes and austin hedges all go deep to beat the tigers nine to three so finally seeing some offense over there in cleveland but a uh, big shout out to akil badu for hitting his first major league blast now 
Now, speaking of blasts, Nate Lau was a offseason acquisition by the Rangers from the Tampa Bay Rays, and my God, did he hit a moonshot yesterday. 465 feet off the bat, absolutely crushed it into the fountains there in Kansas City. And the Rangers would go on to beat the Royals 7-3. Jordan Lyles gets the Rangers their first win of the season, and Nate Lau with the offense. Brady Singer kind of got teed off on, which is kind of upsetting because uh, he's a big stud prospect over there in Kansas City that I'm hoping does well. But yeah, the Royals 2-1. and one. The Rangers finally get on the board at being 1-2, and two, avoid the sweep from the Royals. And uh, a lot of offense in those two games. So I don't know if it was just two bad pitching staffs going against each other, but uh, both those offenses in the Rangers and the Royals have been looking very, very good. Now, yesterday we talked about Nick Castellanos getting in a fight with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, I guess you could say he won the fight. Uh, he goes deep in his first plate appearance yesterday, absolutely crushes a baseball to left center, had a swing and a drive into deep left center, and I'll make it a 3-0 ball game. So the Reds end up putting tw putting up 12 runs to the Cardinals, one run, 12-1 victory for the Cincinnati Reds. They go up to 2-1, and one, while the Cardinals fall to 1-2. and two. The Reds looking pretty good to start the season out. Ironically, the only bad adding they've had has been their ace, Luis Castillo, so we'll see. Hopefully he gets back on the hill. The Reds could honestly surprise a lot of people in this division. That offense is looking fantastic fantastic and Castellanos is doing a great job getting that team fired up over there now the Atlanta Braves uh I I can't sugarcoat this man they suck right now like they're not a bad team I'm not saying the Braves are a bad team they are a last place team currently they're not gonna be a last place team but my god do they suck right now dude they lose another game where they only put up one run on a Travis Darno solo home run so they get their second home run of the season they just can't score runs and the Phillies pitching staff is not that great they got shut out by Zach Wheeler. Uh, Aaron Nola pitched a gem against them. And those are two pretty good pitchers. But Pat Eflin, is that even his name? I think it's Zach Eflin. Is it Zach? I literally don't even know this dude's name. And he, he almost shut you guys out. Zach Eflin. His name is Zach Eflin. I legitimately forgot his name was Zach for a second. I think Pat Eflin, Eflin or whatever is a tackle for the Vikings. But seven innings pitch, four hits, one earned run, eight strikeouts against one of the better offenses in all of baseball. What the hell are we doing, Braves? They look terrible. I'm literally having voice cracks yelling at these fucking Braves teams. Yeah, so the Braves suck. I, I I can't really sugarcoat that. The Phillies haven't been doing much better offensively, but good enough to beat these Braves when they only put up one or two runs a game. So Braves, you got to start hitting, man. Got to start hitting. I know they're going to get hot eventually, but this is a very, very slow start to the season. This is about the worst case scenario you could have had in that first series. Now we got to move, move over to the AL West now and talk about the A's versus the Astros. I honestly thought the A's were the best team in this division going into the season but the Astros have yet to put up less than eight runs in a game the last three games they've scored exactly nine runs the first game of the season they put up eight runs and they have not allowed more than four runs in a game so the the, the A's look terrible right now honestly the A's don't even look that bad the Astros just look amazing offensively it is absolutely terrifying the Angels go to play the uh, Astros next week and I am absolutely terrified about it because the Astros look incredibly hot right now uh, was name Kyle Tucker goes deep Chaz McCormick hits his first major league home run so guys you haven't even heard of are contributing Jason Castro Angels legend goes deep yesterday as well a really a good offensive day from a lot of players Kyle Tucker's the only name on that list that's really a standout guy yeah they're getting a lot of production from that lineup man nine runs in each of their last three games with eight runs on opening day so the Astros are a very scary team a force to be reckoned with right now but they aren't the only team that's a force to be reckoned with in the American League West. Let's get into the Sunday night matchup. Shohei Otani on the bump for the Angels. Shohei Otani batting second for the Angels. And my God, just look at these clips. Man was throwing 100.6 miles per hour on the mound. The fastest pitch thrown by a major leaguer this year. And then he goes out. First pitch swinging. Yep. The Except loudest crack I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I might be addicted to crack after. I Like, I never have understood crack addictions until I heard this, this at-bat right here. Shohei Otani just, like, literally first pitch, and he just, no hesitation, murdered that baseball. I was legitimately jumping up and down, screaming in my girlfriend's ear on the couch. I, I was losing my mind. Anyways, now that I'm calmed down from that, Shohei Otani throws four and two thirds with uh, seven strikeouts, giving up three runs. Only one of them was earned because of terrible defensive plays, man. The Angels tried to give the White Sox this game, man. Angels tried to give the White Sox this game. The Angels had three errors on the day, leading to three unearned runs 
and a tie ball game going into the ninth inning. They had home runs from Shohei Otani and Jared Walsh going into the ninth. Jared Walsh comes up to the plate with two runners on, and my God, he just lays into one. Oppo Taco, Jared Walsh with a two home run night. Absolutely electric. If I see Albert Pujols in the starting lineup tomorrow, I will lose my damn mind. I don't care. Lefty, lefty, whatever you want to do. Jared Walsh is a stud. There's no way around it. But Shohei Otani, electric on the mound. Jared Walsh, electric at the dish. And uh, the team has really been rallying well, man. I am loving the energy I've been seeing from the Angels. Go on to beat the White Sox 3-1 to one in the series. The White Sox only take one game. It seemed like a little bit of poor managing from Tony La Russa. I mean, I'm no major league manager. He was playing some pretty good matchups. He brought in Cody, Cody Hewer to face uh, Jared Walsh the first AB. Apparently, Cody Hewer is a lot better against lefties than he is against righties. Statistically, uh, only allowing five hits to lefties all of last year. Obviously, it was a shortened season, but he still had quite a few appearances against lefties and he wasn't uh he was very good against left-handed batters and then in the ninth inning they just brought in another righty to give up a home run to him i i don't know man it, it seemed like a little bit of poor managing a lot of people were kind of iffy about leaving otani in uh, with the bases loaded after walking the bases loaded but he got out of the inning he just i honestly i didn't talk enough about this let's talk about this joey otani gets left in right he walks the bases loaded he gets left in there's two outs and he gets strike three called on a swinging strike that almost hit yohan mancata the ball gets away from Max Stassi. He picks it up, overthrow to second, uh, overthrow to first base. David Fletcher catches the overthrow, throws it in, overthrows Otani at the plate. Jose Abreu slides into Otani. Absolutely terrifying. I went from li literally, oh my God, I wish I had a clip of this, dude. I I'll, I'll reenact it real quick. I'm literally staring at the gate. He gets a strikeout. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Get it. And then Max Stassi goes, gets the ball, overthrows it. I'm like, okay. Oh, oh okay that's one and then he throws it in i'm like okay god we got him at home the ball's gonna beat him there and then it's overthrown and then shohei goes down and i i'm just sitting there like this i'm just sitting there like this i don't even know i don't know if any of that made sense or was coherent whatsoever i'm pretty fucking tired but electric game dude absolutely electrifying game ever that game literally had everything throwing errors shohei otani throwing 100 on the mound shohei otani with 115 mile per hour 451 foot home run to right field Joey Otani never goes to right field either so that was that was kind of a rare feat to see but my god does this man have some pop in his bat and that was honestly the most excited I've been for an Angels game in a very very long time so that was absolutely amazing thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate each and every one of you be sure to check out those links in the description like I said and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to be entered to win a free MLB jersey thanks again so much for watching and I will see you guys all tomorrow morning have a great rest of your day